Well, let me be the devil's advocate for just a moment. The, it, it, it's not uh, hereditary in the sense that it's not inherited, based on what you're saying, yes. from a gen, uh, genetic standpoint. But familial incidence does seem to be there. Well, again, oh, yeah. what you're inheriting is lifestyles and cookbooks. But, but for instance, I have a family in New Orleans. I grew up in New Orleans, <laughs> probably the one of the most unhealthy and by external environments you yeah. can have with oil and aluminum and everything else. But one, in one family, the mother died of breast cancer, two of the daughters died of breast cancer, and the third daughter went in and had like a, like a double mastectomy as a preventive, mm -hmm. and there was, uh, there was cancer cells there. Now, surely that wasn't just environment. They had married and gone their own ways, and surely that wasn't food. If, if you look at, there's a, there's a very interesting study with women just that all of them had uh, uh, BRCA1 and 2, okay? Now, just before I go into that, only 5% of all of the breast cancers that are diagnosed have BRCA1 have that, and 2. Yeah. So most of them have nothing to do with the mutation. It's environmental. Okay. Now, okay. secondly, on these women, they had two groups. They separated in two groups. Two groups. To one group, they did the double mastectomy. And to the other group, they changed the lifestyle. The ones that, where they changed the lifestyle, not one case was... Wow. Will turn into a malignancy. So still, even if you have the mutation, you have to trigger it. So we got to talk when we come back about how to change the <laughs> lifestyle. It's time for another break. Welcome back to Balanced Health. Today's discussion is on breast cancer. And in the previous segments, we've talked about medical treatments. We actually haven't talked about them that much. But <laughs> in, in this segment, though, we're going to be discussing the importance of healthy spiritual attitude when, when battling cancer. And Dr. Francisco Contreras is our special guest today. He's an oncologist and surgeon at the Oasis of Hope Hospital. And, you know, you have made some really astonishing statements here on this program. And, I, and that's, you know, that's what Balanced Health is all about. We like to present both sides mm -hmm. and, and, and all the the different ideas out there. And so anyway, I, wanna, I want us to talk about for a minute, uh, before we go to the, the importance of spirituality, which we know is important, but you said the women who changed their lifestyle had no cancers, and the women who had a double mastectomy still yeah, got some? they still got some. That's, that's yeah. amazing. What, what lifestyle changes would have such well, a dramatic amazingly, result? Amazingly, they're not that complicated. You know, a lot of times we, we are afraid of anything that is alternative because, oh, I'm going to have to be a vegan. I'm going to have to, you know, do <laughs> away with... Eat tree bark and with, sing with, kumbaya. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with so many of the things that I love, and I'd just rather live shorter than... So long without any fun. Feel that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Quality yeah. versus quantity. So, what what studies have shown, and th this is based on eleven studies done by Harvard University, that women that exercise four hours a week will reduce the risk of developing cancer by sixty six percent. Wow, four without hours a week. any other change up, see how much in their <laughs> life. Four hours a week, and this walking. Wow. It's it's not much. It's not weightlifting, it's just exercising. If, if walking is all you do, you will get the benefit. The wow. more exercise you do, the better. Amazing. Why why does it make so much impact in, on cancer of the breast? It makes impact on all tumors, but especially on cancer of the breast, because you need a, a quite a bit of fat in order to, cons to, to produce estrogen. Mm -hmm. So the more it's burn... It's a fat-dependent it, yes. fat tumor is yes. cancer, if, right? If you burn it out, you will lower the amount of estrogen. In fact, I think everybody knows that athletes, that, you know, for instance, Olympic athletes, they stop menstruating. Because, because they just don't have enough estrogen. Consume. Wow. But I think we would be remiss. That exercise tip is a great tip. Would you talk about xenoestrogens for just a moment? Because that's one way to reduce estrogens. Yeah. I think a lot of people but are taking one, yeah. in all types of estrogens. They have no idea where they're coming no from. No idea. And I know in, in your books, which if you'll mention also, yes. where, where are these things coming yeah. from? Uh, basically plastics, but the, the most uh, 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 amount of uh, xenoestrogen come from pesticides. Mm. And 94% of the foods we consume have, have pesticides. Them. So if you uh, go organic, that's one good that way to help, right? Definitely. It helps tremendously. And one of the things that I recommend for women is natural progesterone because we're not going to do away with all of them. Mm -hmm. right. they're, they're, we're just floating in an ocean we of, can't, yeah. of, of estrogen or estrogenic substances. The, other, the second one is diet. And uh, there's a, a number of reports that show that if you consume five portions of fruits and vegetables a day, and that's what tough is a to portion? Do. <laughs> Not too tough because a portion is what you can fill up this cup with. So if you consume five of these full of vegetables and or fruits 
a day, you will lower your incidence of cancer by 40%. Amazing. Well, I think I should mention, Shirley, that one scoop of the Kailia's yeah, total living say, drink how is, many? is 10 servings. It's 10 servings? It's the 10 more servings. you consume, wow. the better. That's you know, awesome. Um, we're talking about also incorporate here the spiritual part of healing. You treat over 800 people a year yourself. Speak to our audience, people who come in with an attitude of, I'm going to beat this. God is my healer. Jehovah Rapha is my source. Do those people do better than people that come in and say, just treat me? Let me tell you, yes. The, the, the answer, the short answer oh, is please, yes. Please. There is a big difference on being a cancer victim and a cancer victor. Mm. Mm. And the only way you can be a cancer victor is through spiritual fortitude. Let me explain what I mean. I have a, an aunt that, that was diagnosed with cancer of the colon, metastasis to the liver. Mm. The book says four months. Yeah. I did an operation, resolved the plumbing, did the, the, the therapy. Two years later, she's completely free of cancer, completely free. Mm. And yet she couldn't sleep. Oh. And I asked her, why, why aunt? Because I don't know when it's coming back. Mm -hmm. You see, she received a miracle, but she was not free of cancer. Mm. Because it still was in her mind. And, and, and then I oh. have patients that say cancer is the best thing that ever happened to me. Wow. The difference is when you... I'm so sorry. We have to go. Oh. We have to go. And this is so good, but we're going to have you back. And okay. we'll, so hold that story for next time. <laughs> well, for more information on breast cancer and where to go if you or someone you love has been diagnosed, go to TLN.com, click on shows, and then go to Balanced Health. I'm so sorry. That's all the time we have. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to make a donation or order a DVD, mm -hmm. give us a call. And to submit your health questions, go to Balanced Health at TLN.com or call the number on your screen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Balanced Health.